Hong Kong just had a legislative election, and you'll never guess who won. John Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. You may have heard that things aren't going too well in Hong Kong lately. What with people fleeing, being arrested under the national security law, and literally paying to sleep for five hours on a bus. But that doesn't mean things are going badly. Sleeping on buses is great. And as for elections, well, Hong Kong just had their first Patriots-only legislative election on Sunday. A Patriots-only election was just as fun as it sounds. In fact, most Hong Kongers were having too much fun to actually vote. There was record low voter turnout. And out of the 90 seats in the Legislative Council, known as LegCo, 89 seats were won by pro-Beijing establishment candidates. Only one was won by a non-establishment candidate. But this didn't happen because Hong Kongers are suddenly super pro-establishment. They didn't go from fighting the power to voting for the power. No, this was the Chinese Communist Party completely taking over Hong Kong's elections. Here's how they did it. Voting in Hong Kong has always been complicated. Hong Kongers can't directly vote for most government officials. In fact, the 2014 Umbrella Movement protests were about people demanding the right to directly vote for Hong Kong's chief executive. That's why the banners said things like, I want true universal suffrage. Letting people directly elect the chief executive was something the Chinese Communist Party had promised. But then they broke that promise. I know, you're shocked. Meanwhile, this Legislative Council election that just happened was actually supposed to happen back in 2020. Then, just a month after the Chinese Communist Party imposed a national security law on Hong Kong, Chief Executive Carrie Lam postponed the legislative election for over a year due to COVID-19. Many people were skeptical that COVID was the real reason for the delay. But I think it's pretty clear Carrie Lam just wanted to keep people safe from democracy. Because conveniently, postponing the election for a year gave Beijing enough time to set up a new Patriots-only overhaul. It was effectively a purge of Hong Kong's election system. Under the overhaul, only 20 seats were directly elected by residents. The rest were chosen by industry groups or Beijing loyalists. Here's how Hong Kong's LegCo used to work. There were 70 seats with 35 elected directly based on geography, and 35 elected by what are called functional constituencies. Those are basically industry groups that represent different parts of Hong Kong's economy. Because most functional constituencies are pro-Beijing, the establishment candidates would win the majority of the seats. The system was purposefully rigged so that it was almost impossible for pro-democracy political parties, known as the Pan-Democrats, to win a majority. But almost impossible wasn't good enough for the Chinese Communist Party, for reasons I'll get into a little later. So as part of their patriots-only election purge over the past year, the Chinese authorities actually added 20 seats to LegCo, making 90 total. But they also gave the election committee, which picks the chief executive, the power to choose 40 LegCo seats. 30 seats are chosen by the functional constituencies, and only 20 seats are directly elected now. So now, it's even more impossible for pro-democracy groups to win a majority. But that's still not good enough for Beijing. They need it to be even more, more impossible for pro-democracy groups to win. So now, the election committee also gets to approve all of the candidates. You can't run if you don't get nominated by the committee. And that's not all. Even after securing at least 10 nominations from the election committee, potential candidates had to be screened by the National Security Police. 
as well as by an eligibility review committee. Running for LegCo now sounds harder than adopting a baby. Why did Beijing put all these new rules in place? It's because back in the 2019 elections, the pan-democrats whooped Beijing's butt. More after the break. Welcome back. In 2019, Hong Kong held local district council elections. This is the equivalent of voting for city council members. You know, people who handle when to do trash pickup and where to put traffic lights. But the difference was in 2019, these local elections were happening after six months of massive protests against the government. So when Hong Kongers got the chance to vote in any election, even the local elections that people don't usually care about, they showed up. There were lines around the block in the highest turnout ever seen in any Hong Kong election. And Hong Kongers voted for hundreds of pro-democracy candidates. The pan-democrats won more than six times as many seats as the pro-Beijing establishment, taking over 17 out of 18 district councils. It was a total blowout. And apparently, it caught Beijing totally by surprise. This is why you shouldn't read your own propaganda. The Communist Party had no idea what was actually going on, and they were humiliated. But as the pan-democrats emerged victorious in 2019, they set their sights on an even bigger prize, winning a majority in LegCo in 2020. That would give them the chance to block proposals from the pro-Beijing legislators, and maybe actually pass their own laws. Now, I said the system was rigged to make that almost impossible. But because of their blowout win in the district councils, the pan-democrats had a slim chance. You see, the district councils were actually one of the functional constituencies with seats in LegCo. And the pan-democrats now had those seats. If they could win just enough of the directly elected seats, they could actually have a majority. So, they held a primary election in July 2020 to make sure they didn't split the pro-democracy vote. But the Chinese Communist Party didn't like that idea. So they declared the primary election illegal. They could do that because they had just passed the national security law two weeks before the primaries. But despite that threat, 600,000 people still voted in the primaries. Illegally, according to the Chinese regime. And with the national security law in place, Beijing was able to start gutting the LegCo election. First, by delaying the election until 2021. And then, by making a bunch of stuff illegal under the national security law. For example, by disqualifying activists like Joshua Wong and other pro-democracy figures from running in the election. Then, kicking out four pro-democracy legislators, leading the rest of the pan-democrats to resign from LegCo then arresting 53 activists who had participated in the pro-democracy primaries. The Hong Kong authorities said participating in the primaries amounted to trying to overthrow the government. Yes, those wily pan-democrats, overthrowing the system by trying to get elected within the system. No one saw that coming. But once the Chinese Communist Party started their patriots-only ledge coalitions, that's when things really started getting interesting. I'll tell you why after the break. Welcome back. After the Chinese Communist Party started pushing their patriots-only Hong Kong election, the Chinese regime got obsessed with strongly encouraging people in Hong Kong to vote. People weren't thrilled with voting in an election that actually reduced democracy in Hong Kong, which is why they started talking about leaving votes blank, or not voting at all. Good news! The Communist Party said leaving blank ballots was not illegal. Bad news! The party said inciting other people to leave blank ballots was illegal. And they actually arrested people for it. Yes, Hong Kong is a place where they went from punishing people for wanting to vote in elections to punishing people for not wanting to vote in elections. Meanwhile, the pan-democrats did not run at all in the elections, which is another reason the pro-Beijing candidates swept into office. 
It's hard to run for office when you're in prison for running for office. But at some point, the Chinese regime realized that turnout in this election was going to be pretty bad, which it was. Despite the fact that the Hong Kong government tried to do things like give everyone free public transportation for the day, which may have backfired as it appears a lot of people took public transit to go to the mall. But that's okay, because Hong Kong chief executive Carrie Lam came out to say ahead of the election that low turnout in the election is not bad. It just means the government is credible and doing well. Yes, people not voting doesn't mean they're fed up with the government. It actually means people love the government. They love the government so much, they don't even need to vote. Which is exactly the same system they have in mainland China. Unfortunately, Western liberal democracies don't seem to understand China's unique system since they've condemned the Hong Kong election for the erosion of democracy. There's no erosion of democracy. And if you say there is, that's violent interference. Look, Hong Kongers are showing they love the government by voting in the election. And they're also showing they love the government by not voting in the election. Don't think about it too hard or your brain will explode. Now it's time for me to answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. Fans who support the show on Patreon or Locals. DPR of DC asks on Locals, why stop with local party officials? Why not blackmail foreign nationals, visiting dignitaries, traveling businessmen, investigating scientists, or world sport governing officials? DPR of DC is referring to our recent episode on the Shanghai Red Mansion sex trafficking and prostitution ring that operated for 20 years. The owner of the Red Mansion had blackmailed local party officials by inviting them to sleep with prostitutes and then secretly filmed them. Well, DPR of DC, they do blackmail foreign nationals. Not the Shanghai Red Mansion guy specifically, but the Chinese Communist Party has definitely honey trapped more than one high profile foreigner. We just usually don't find out about it. There are some notable exceptions when we do find out, like the case of Neil Bush, the brother of former President George W. Bush. Back in 2003, during his divorce proceedings, it came out in court that Neil Bush had slept with many women on his business trips to Hong Kong and Thailand. The women, he said, simply knocked on the door of his hotel room, entered, and had sex with him. He said that he did not know if they were prostitutes because they never asked for money and he did not pay them. So either Neil Bush is really stupid or, okay, no matter what the explanation, he's really stupid. And I can only guess that Neil Bush brings that same level of awareness to his business dealings in China because Neil Bush had several shady business deals, including a deal with Grace Semiconductor a company managed by the son of former Chinese leader Jiang Zemin. Jiang Zemin also apparently had dinner with Neil Bush and serenaded him with a military song. I didn't realize that random women knocking on Neil Bush's hotel room door would be the least weird part of the story. Anyway, almost 20 years later, Neil Bush is still a stooge for the Chinese Communist Party, writing pieces like this. There's also the case of Ian Clement, a former aide to UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Clement admitted he was honey trapped during the Beijing Olympics in 2008. He claims the women drugged him and searched his papers in his Blackberry. Clement also admitted that he was briefed by MI6 about honey traps before going to China, but he still fell for it anyway. You get the picture. The stupid, stupid picture. Thanks for your question, DPR of DC, and thank you for supporting China Uncensored on our Locals community. We rely mainly on viewer support to help this show keep going. So if you like what we do, be like DPR of DC and join us on Locals or the crowdfunding website Patreon. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.